everyone so welcome to the second lecture in our previous lecture we were discussing about what is unsustainability and why do we need sustainability today we will discuss about the definition of sustainability and sustainable development why do we need to have definitions because in order to do design for sustainability you first need to know what are the things which comprise sustainability and only then we can go ahead towards designing for sustainability hence the importance of definitions why do we want to look at the definition of both sustainability and sustainable development is as we will discuss sustainability is achievable only when we look at the confluence of social economic and environmental sustainability which implies that we are not only talking about sustainability but we are talking about the entire system that is the entire system needs to be developed in manner that it is can be qualified as sustainable development the problem with the domain of sustainability is there are too many definitions of sustainability and not all definitions of sustainability are such that that it can help you in designing products and solutions to achieve sustainability so it is estimated that currently we have more than 300 definitions of sustainability and sustainable development these exist in various domains like environmental management agriculture biological sciences and so on so the dictionary definition of sustainability says sustainability simply implies that a given activity or action is capable of being sustained that is continued indefinitely now if we look at this particular definition within the environmental domain this is not particularly helpful since many highly damaging practices can be sustained within time frames that relative to the individual human lifespan and certainly the cycles of corporate profit taking are seemingly indefinite what do we mean by this say for example it was during the industrial revolution and a uh, couple of decades after the industrial uh, revolution specifically that we tried you know, we slowly came to understand the concept of sustainability because of the environmental and other health related damages which was being caused due to industrialization so from this example you can see that it was about the 19th century when the industrial revolution became more and more widespread it was only around the 1960s when the debate related to environmental pollution started taking lot of uh, attention so it was about a 100 year, almost about a 100 years after which the debate started cropping up already if in 1960s we knew that at the rate of consumption that we are doing of our resources we cannot sustain and if you see today after more than 6 decades have passed and we have still sustain so the problem with the previous definition that sustainability simply implies that a given activity or action is capable of being sustained might not be very useful when we want to design something because in a human's lifespan which might be about 80 to 100 years and maybe even lesser and for very few people little more uh, we might not be able to realize all the damaging effects we might be able to continue at the rate we are continuing for another two generations with obvious degradation keeping on happening and we can still sustain similarly for a company which wants to reap profit as fast as possible again these changes are way much more slower than a corporate or a company's profit taking cycle so what we need because we are designers and engineers and we want to design products and services which will be used by human beings and which will be produced by corporates we need to have the definition which is more suitable as per the individual human life span and the cycles of corporate profit taking say for example it is uh, been found out by a team of iit kharagpur scientists that it took 900 year long drought to wipe out the indo civilization once they saw drought for such a long long period of time gradually they started migrating to greener pastures 
so when we are looking at sustainability we have to have a definition which is in the human lifespan as well as the corporate profit taking lifespan so the ecosystem of this planet has evolved over billions of years all of us know about this in the context of the our earth's history human history is very very small say about almost 5000 years long but in this very very short span of human existence on this planet we have caused changes to this planet which are at a very very rapid rate especially the changes have been very rapid post the industrialization has happened so the um, basic fundamental over here is that the pace of change we have visited upon the natural world is spectacularly rapid it may also be irreversible given that it exceeds the rate at which ecosystems evolve because the whole ecosystem has evolved over billions of years hence we might, the rate at which we are consuming which is alarmingly high we may not be able to the ecosystem might not be able to regenerate itself so it becomes necessary to define sustainability to be more relevant to the human environment so some of the examples of these definitions are say sustainable technology techniques or sustainable agriculture or sustainable technology can be defined as of or relating to or being a method of harvesting or using a resource so that the resource is not depleted or permanently damaged so now say for example can we reap or extract coal in a manner that it is not permanently depleted or damage it is not possible but we can reap wind energy solar energy in a manner or say tidal energy in a manner so that the resource is not depleted or permanently damaged sustainable society is therefore defined as of or relating to a lifestyle involving the use of sustainable methods so we can define sustainable methods or sustainable techniques as per the previous definition that is of or relating to or being a method of harvesting or using a resource so that the resource is not depleted or damaged completely a society which does that is which lives that way is a sustainable society from here we come to this importance of the fact why do we really need to understand sustainable development so let's take an example say in case of agriculture if i want to maintain the fertility of the soil which means i am not extracting nutrients from the soil at a rate at which it gets permanently damaged i have to extract nutrients from the soil for growing my crops at a rate so that the soil can naturally replenish it so what do i have to do for that there are a couple of techniques for doing that one of them is i will have to keep the land fallow that is uncultivated so for maybe a season or two seasons depending on the context depending on the type of soil i might i must have to use uh, compost uh, or uh, natural manures to enrich the soil i should be not using fertilizers or should be minimizing the use of fertilizers insecticides or other damaging effects now the agricultural machinery which are going to work on the soil so that the soil is pulverized and then i can plant my crops the agricultural machinery should not also damage the soil's texture so my machinery has to be designed in that particular manner i should also allow the growth of earthworm and other insects which help the soil to maintain its nutrient quality i will also have to take measures so that my soil does not get eroded during rains or due to wind so now you can see whenever i i started talking about sustainable agriculture but i have to do so many different activities in order to just maintain soils health so that the resource the nutrients of the soil is not depleted soil itself is not depleted because of erosion same will come in other stages of agriculture so a sustainable sustainability cannot looked upon across only one particular activity or a step it has to be looked as a holistic system that's why it is important that whenever we are talking about sustainability we are actually talking about sustainable development 
so when i talk about sustainability in terms of agriculture i will have to bring in a development a scheme of mechanism a scheme of techniques for doing the various activities in, involved in agriculture so that my agriculture becomes sustainable again there are many definitions of sustainable development the one which is the most popular and also very useful for the context of design comes from the brutland commission of the united nations and it was coined on 20th of march in 1987 it defines sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs interesting definition it has two very important concepts into it first important concept is the concept of needs as you say it it is talking about development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs so the concept of needs whose needs say for example i have good enough resources and i might feel that i need a smart watch why do i need a smart watch because it is very important for me i can track my physical activities i can track my track my sleep i can track my other health activities so i have a feeling that i really need a smart watch i cannot do without a smart watch but is that really a need or is it just my want or desire so it was very important in this particular context that we should define what is need only then my uh, definition of sustainable uh, development can be operationalized so the concept of need in particular the essential needs of the world's poor to which overriding priority should be given because food water safety medical care good quality air and so on these are the ones which are the most important needs they have to be fulfilled we have to always uh, thus we have when we are talking about sustainable development we have to always try to give a conscious thought whether the development that we are trying to bring in is a essential need is a mm, uh, desire is a want and so on the second key concept is the idea of limitations imposed by the state of technology and social organization on the environment's ability to meet present and future needs in our previous lecture we were talking about the cng vehicle so i told you that because cng vehicles do not emit any kind of visible smoke so it was assumed that it is very environment friendly because it is not releasing smoke so many of the uh, Uh, local governments the city level governments or the governments from different metros of the country uh, pursued means and measures so that all kind of pub public transportation like uh, auto rickshaws or buses they are run by cng but more recently as per a study conducted by csir it was found out that these uh, cng run vehicles they emit carbon nanoparticles now these carbon nanoparticles because they are in nanometer sizes you cannot really see them so you do not know that they are being emitted but they are carcinogenic which means they can cause cancer when inhaled so there was a point of time in which we did not know about the we did not have the entire technological know how of uh, cng and its impact on pollution and we assume that th this is less polluting but now when the technology has evolved and we already know that there is serious environmental pollution and health hazard associated with them we might have to have change directions another example is that of using ddt as a pesticide so in a couple of decades back ddt was used extensively and it was also suggested by scientists and uh, agricultural experts for being used in uh, farms as a pest very effective pesticide 
it was only a little later that it was realized that DDT has very harmful effects. So, it has been couple of decades since the use of DDT has been completely stopped. But still very small amount of DDT is found even in the bloodstream of babies born nowadays. So, that is why the idea of limitation imposed by the state of technology. We might not be technologically advanced or our knowledge might not be so scientifically advanced at a given point of time and that becomes a limitation for our sustainable development concept at a given point of time at which the knowledge increases and the knowledge develops over time and then we will have to change. Now coming to examples of limitations imposed by social organization. Say for example all our festivals there is lot of pollution happening. So, during Diwali we have lot of air pollution caused by crackers, lot of sound pollution caused by crackers. During all other festivals when we have some kind of idol, the idol is finally immersed in the water. The idol is usually made up of mm, different kinds of plastic material and plaster of Paris. They are none of them are biodegradable. So, there is a lot of pollution and all these uh, polluting activities they happen in our water bodies. So, now the social organization is such that that even after running lots and lots of uh, awareness campaigns we cannot bring in changes in people's behavior because festival is supposed to be celebrated in a particular manner it is assumed to be fun in a particular manner. So, it becomes very difficult in spite of all the awareness to convince people to not mm, do activities in a similar situation. Similarly, there can be other activities which are part of the social organization which although one might know that it leads to some kind of unsustainability, but it is very difficult to bring in changes in that case. So, all definitions of sustainability require that we see the world as a system, a system that connects space and that connects time. What do we mean by this is? So, when you think of the world as a system over space, we come to understand that if I do a polluting activity in say Guwahati where I am living, the pollutants will not be limited to Guwahati. They will travel to every other part of the world. So, the air pollution caused over here is added to the whole globe's air pollution. If I pollute the rivers over here, they will ultimately go into the mm, Indian Ocean which is connected to the, uh, to the other oceans. So, whenever we talk about sustainability, we have to think about world as a system over space which is connected over space. Secondly, when we think of the world as a system over time, like I gave you the example of DDT. So, it was about three decades back when the use of DDT has been stopped, but we still see the damaging effects of DDT. So, it is not that the activities that I do now will only affect me now, it, the effect will continue over a long period of time and it may continue for a couple of generations. Another important aspect is quality of a life as a system. What do we mean by that? So, say if I have very good physical health, I have access to very good education, I also have access to very good mm, quality food and air, but I do not have access to good employment. I will not see the quality of life as very great. So, sustainability is, uh, so say for example, I might say, okay, let this whole region be a forest area, let us not bring any industry over here. But the people living in that entire region, if they will have great quality of life because of good mm, uh, unpolluted food, the unpolluted air, unpolluted water, but when it they might also get good education because educational institutions can be set up, but when it comes to getting employment, because they do not find uh, good employment opportunities, they might have to migrate to another place, because now quality of life as a system is not being achieved at that location. Yes, of course, 
uh, it does not mean that only industries can generate employment this was just an example uh, it was an example considering the fact that other sectors of economy have not been developed so this example was given do not assume that a place which is very green cannot have industries one can always have um, industries created in a manner that the pollution is not happening what uh, my intent of saying over here is quality of life as a system so i need a lot of different things to happen well in my life to see it as a good quality of life and if i cannot give good quality of life that kind of sustainable development is not sustainable so the concept of sustainable development is rooted in systems thinking for example if i want to sell milk in tetra pack now tetra pack if collected back can be recycled because the four layers of tetra pack can be separated and recycled so the plastic layers can go for um, recycling accordingly the paper can go accordingly and aluminum can be again reused but only if the tetra pack is collected back so in order to for tetra pack milk to be a sustainable solution i have this but aspect which involves that the collection of tetra pack has to happen which means i have to develop this entire system in which not only i procure the material for making the tetra pack i also own the machines which will dismantle the tetra pack and do the recycling process but i will also have to have a nationwide collection system hence the concept of sustainable development is to is rooted in the sort of systems thinking it helps us understand ourselves and our world so it's not only me if i have to maintain the health of the soil i have to also look into how do i maintain the earthworms if i have to have good agriculture i also need the bees if i have to ensure mm, good living for myself i have to also ensure that i do not pollute someone else's pond because that is indirectly connected to my pond so it helps us understand ourselves and our world the problems we face are very complex and serious and we cannot address them in the same way we created them but yes of course we can address them how to address them that is what the concern of our courses so we discussed last time in uh, in our last times lecture that sustainable development happens at the confluence of three constituent parts social economic and environmental according to united nations agenda 21 they added another fourth pillar which is culture so now we will try to understand all these different pillars there are um, uh, different organizations and for different purposes different pillars or dimensions as you might call them have been identified so i will explain it more from the context of circles of sustainability because this one is a very comprehensive uh, list so the circles of sustainability is a model which is now being used by organizations such as the united nations cities program and metropolis this particular matrix is used by uh, used for measuring the sustainable level of sustainability of different cities and metros it comprises of um, four dimension economics politics ecology and culture so when we were talking about the social dimension in our previous slides we were talking more about something which is was a combination of politics and culture which has now been separated to get a way a more um, detailed list so you can see this one is the representation of the city of melbourne from um, the year 2011 so on a scale of 1 to 9 where uh, which is like from critical to vibrant on different parameters you rate a particular city so when i compare different uh, cities so this is melbourne you can see this is johannesburg whereas melbourne was vibrant on many more aspects johannesburg in this graph shows to be less vibrant and this is the city of delhi this is the result from 2012 now let's go into understanding the definitions of each of these domains 
so first coming ecology the ecological domain is defined as the practices and meanings that occur across the intersection between social and natural realms what it means is the social and natural realms so like materials and energy we are all extracting it from the natural realm and we are interacting with it while we are extracting it while we are using it so whatever is lying inside we are not bothered about that so we are talking about the in interaction between the social and the natural realm so all the material and energy that we use all the water and air that we use and all the flora and fauna that we are interacting with similarly so interaction between the social and the natural realms focusing on the important dimension of human engagement with and within nature and it also includes the built form what is meant by built form all kinds of buildings bridges factories anything that we have built so it comprises of materials and energy water and air flora and fauna habitat and settlements built form which is like everything that we have built and transportation uh the difference between habitat and settlement is so habitat is so habitat is not equal to a house habitat comprises of your house and the surroundings in which you live the settlement comprises of a group of habitats which can be seen as one entity so the entity can be defined in terms of a city it can be defined in terms of a nomadic group settled in a particular area or it can be defined in terms of one village next is built form and transport then comes embodiment and sustenance what embodiment means is say for example i make this mobile phone within the uh, uh, mobile phone it will embody certain amount of materials it will embody certain amount of energy for manufacturing it and for disposing it certain amount of pollutants will be re uh, released they also form part of the embodiment it is held inside that mobile phone so embodiment and sustenance what can be sustained and what cannot be sustained um, cannot be sustained N next comes emissions and waste so emissions is uh, emission to air emission to water emission to soil and uh, waste can be say plastic waste paper waste which is like the discarded part of things after they have been used so in this particular domain it's very important that we talk about the interaction between the social and the natural realms J not just talk about the natural realms the next domain is economics the economic domain is defined as the practices and meanings associated with the production use and management of resources where the concept of resources is used in the broadest sense of that word so resource can be your human resource materials are your resources energy is your resource money is a resource so when we use the word resource it is in the broadest terms so we will have to consider everything which is related to production use and management of all these resources so the first sub clause in this is production and resourcing so production implies so if i want to make a mobile phone all the processes which are related to production of the different components of the mobile phone and bringing the mobile phone together assembling it together in the form that we see it resourcing is wherever we have to source all these materials from then comes exchange and transfer so in exchange and transfer exchange is something in which i might mutually exchange something between two people depending on the agreed upon value so say 1 kg of rice might be 50 rupees and 1 kg of dal might be 100 rupees so the ex so for which means if i want to exchange both of them 2 kg of rice is equivalent to 1 kg of uh, dal so exchanges and transfers which are happening 
नेक्स्ट कम्स अकाउंटिंग एंड रेगुलेशन अकाउंटिंग एम्प्लाइज अकाउंटिंग नॉट ओनली इन टर्म्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग बट अकाउंटिंग ऑफ से द अमाउंट ऑफ पोल्यूशन दैट आई एम रिलीजिंग रेगुलेशन एम्प्लाइज ऑल द रूल्स एंड लॉज विच माइट बी इन प्लेस विच हेल्प्स मी टू डू अकाउंटिंग देन कम्स कंजम्पन एंड यूज बिकॉज वी आर टॉकिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिसोर्सेज रिसोर्सेज आर कंज्यूम्ड एंड यूज हेंस द कंजम्पन एंड यूज As I told you, we consider resource in the widest term. So, human being is also a resource, which means labor is a resource. Uh, labor in the sense knowledge-related labor, physical labor. So, knowledge labor. Say, for example, a teacher is a knowledge labor because that person gives knowledge resource. A person who works in a factory and does physical labor is a physical labor. So, labor and their welfare so labor in terms of both knowledge labors physical labors and all forms of labor then comes technology and infrastructure the last one is wealth and its distribution so if the wealth is not very well distributed that brings an unsustainability in that society so comparing how um, uh, much wealth the society a particular uh, city has or that is the dwellers of the city and uh, how well it is distributed coming to the third dimension politics so political is defined as the practices and meanings associated with basic issues of social power such as organization authorization legitimization and regulation so in this domain don't get confused with the word politics it really does not mean about different political parties and just the government what it means is everything which is about social power so social power is created by uh, the structure of an organization how authorization happens for different activities how do i say something is legitimate and what are the different rules so the parameters of this area extend beyond the conventional sense of politics to include not only issues of public and private governance but more broadly social relations in general so what it includes will make it more clear is all sorts of organization and governance governance here does not really mean something related to the government but governance means how a particular organization is governed so if you belong to a particular school there will be certain governance rules for that school if you belong to a company there will be certain governance rules for that particular company which is the organization then related to laws and how do we see justice communication and critique it is very important that i should be able to have communication and communication in a manner that i can also have critiquing possibility then comes representation and negotiation representation is when i should can i have a voice in decisions so say for example in india i can elect my government so which means they are my representatives whom i have elected so i have a voice in the government in the policies of the government so that is representation and negotiation so say for example if there is a protest march happening the protest march is happening because they want to negotiate with the existing with a particular organization or the government on certain aspects then comes security and accord security is related to safety and security it can be both physical security mental security cyber security and accord when even if there is disagreement between parties the chances that the disagreement can be resolved if there are platforms for that that agreement can be brought in similarly dialogue and reconciliation if there is possibility of uh, talking between different people different groups and coming to an agreement when some kind of uh, disagreement has happened finally comes ethics and accountability so can my system say if there is an industry releasing lot of pollutants can my system hold that industry responsible for it finally the last domain which talks about culture so the cultural domain is defined as practices and discourses and material expressions discourses means all kind of knowledge related material 
material expressions can be defined as say for example if i believe in certain cultural practices i might own certain products in my house say if i prefer sitting on the floor i might own a low height stool which is traditionally meant for sitting on the floor or i might have some floor mats which are traditionally meant for sitting on floor my house will be also arranged in a manner that sitting on the floor is possible so which is meant by the material expression so the materials that you own are providing that expression that i can practice those cultural practices whichever i have so the cultural domain is defined as the practices discourses and material expressions which over time express continuities and discontinuities of social meaning cultural practices are not like uh, they will live over infinite amount of time all cultural practices have certain length of time so that's why it is being spoken about in terms of how do i continue a particular cultural practice and what brings in discontinuities of it so the um, cultural practices includes things like identity and engagement so if i identify myself with a particular kind of group or particular kind of practices that is meant by identity and engagement when i can engage with uh, those activities or my groups creativity and recreation very important memory and projection so memory is how i remember things and projection is how i like to uh, remember those things you can go into more details about each and every meaning which will be part of your further reading and i will share the links with you where you can further read through all these the definitions and be more clear on to what each one of them mean uh, the definitions of all these different aspects have been kept very broad so that depending on different contexts i can give different interpretations to them say for example if i am going to develop this going to use this particular idea of identity and engagement in case of a city uh, development it will mean completely different it might mean like how do i design the public spaces so that identity and engagement can be aided but say i want to do the same thing in case of a uh, design of uh, handbags that completely means a different thing okay so how does my handbag give me a particular identity and engagement which ultimately leads to some Uh, sustainability it uh, other aspects of this culture domain are about beliefs and ideas uh, gender and generations inquiry and learning and finally well being and health each of these sub dimensions that is identity and engagement have seven more sub dimensions which you will go through in your reading material now what is design for sustainability so design for sustainability has again emerged in a very broad and inclusive meaning and can be defined as a design practice or education or research that in one way or another contributes to sustainable development so what did we discuss in today's uh, lecture are point 1 sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs next the concept of needs which is very important concept for the definition of sustainable development is in particular the essential needs of the world, world's poor to which we have to give overriding priority next on this in the concept of present and future needs we have the idea of limitations imposed by the state of technology and social organization then all definitions of sustainable development require that we see the world as a system a system that connects space a system that connects time and quality of life as a system so you cannot design a product so whenever you say i have designed a very eco friendly xyz product you cannot claim that it is very sustainable until and unless you work it along the entire system you check out what is the impact of the whole product on today's world and in future world 
so this uh, reading material you can go through this particular uh, website circles of sustainability it explains in detail all the dimensions and the sub dimensions which are part of it uh, this particular website has many other topics and if you are interested you can also go through all those topics which gives you uh, more and more uh, uh, thought provoking ideas related to the whole concept of sustainability and how different uh, groups are approaching it differently in different contexts say cities agriculture and so on in the next lecture we will start talking about how do we achieve sustainability through design thanks mm -hmm.